So, okay, so let's, uh, I mean, I put the code in, um, in the slide, but also the part, I mean, the, the script, the entire script is um, Moodle as well, so you can download that. And um, yeah, we can just talk through it. I don't know if everybody has a computer, but at least I can, I think, talk about how you can write the script, roughly how you write the Jack script, um, what does it mean, how to do it. So um, here, okay, so you can see that I actually put a normal prior for mu, uh, which is uh, at mean 0.1 and standard deviation 0.5. So this, again, as you can see, you might get negative value for sure from you, right, if you do it that way. Um, but a lot of times, as you know, or as you notice that we put a large standard deviation just to represent that it's very, uh, like we are not giving like a strong or strength, like a strong opinion about where the mean should be. Okay, so even though, yes, if you look at equation 23, oh my God, I'm gonna have a negative view of what I'm gonna do, but it's okay, it won't happen. It's more about that I think the mean is around 0.1, but I'm giving a large spread for it. And then of course the data, I mean, when you look at the data, the data are gonna be positive, all of this yij, so you wouldn't really get a negative mu, I think, yeah. But it's something good to keep in mind. And then for the two gamma distributions that we have for the precision, I'm giving very uh, non-informative prior here, just gamma one, one, and then let the data decide. And so a lot of times, if you don't know much about it, just give, like, especially for position, just give gamma one, one, that um, usually will be fine. All right, so I can talk through about the JAX code a little bit. You can also try it. Um, if you want, but take time to, to understand the code a little bit, um, because now, so last time, okay, I think one time before the break, I did show you the JAX code for the GIB sampler, and we didn't get to implement it because we didn't uh, download and install all of them, but back then, I think the JAX script was straightforward because there's no, like, observations grouped in groups, okay? So now we have to be careful, because in the model, we start to write YIJ. Right? And that is observation I in group J. So now when you try to write your likelihood, it's still gonna write a loop because you're looping through all of the observations. But now the loop is more complicated. So maybe let me start talking about the loop for um, the YI first. So first of all, overall, you're gonna write like a model string, like what I did on the screen here. So later the string can be passed to JAX when you run the code. Okay, so that's pretty standard. So you have seen that before. And then you have this more model part. And first of all, we write the likelihood. So the likelihood, what is the likelihood? We have YIJ. Let me write on here. The likelihood was YIJ normal. Mu, J, and sigma, right? That's the likelihood that we have so far. So look at how we're doing it now in this loop. Okay. So we still have YIJ, oh, sorry, YI, sorry, yeah, I should say. Uh, in the model, when we write it, we label it as YIJ. But in the code, it's easier if you still label data from one to capital N. That's just the total number of observations. Okay? And then you can have specific, I mean, you can still write Y bracket I to indicate that observation. And then you can start to play about the mu and sigma by doing the index right. Okay? I mean, alternatively, of course, you can write a double loop, like a nested loop to do it. It's okay, up to you. But I think uh, it's more standardized in this way and it still makes sense. So let's see. So now we're working with one index of um, observation, which is i, and i goes from one to capital N. Capital N is the number of observations. And we're giving a normal distribution for the data model. So remember in JAX that uh, we just use d norm to represent that we're given uh, the distribution for that variable. So just d norm, that's how the syntax is. 
it's not evalu it's not so much evaluating the density like what we do in regular R. It's just how the script, I mean, how the syntax is. So now if you look at what we have inside the denorm command, first of all, we have the mean. And now you can start to see that the mean is more complicated. What we need, if we don't want to run, uh, if we don't want to write a nested loop, what we need is to have a vector of mu j. And then you use the bracket inside to indicate the schedule of your observation i. So obviously, you need to have two vectors. One is mu j. The other one is schedule. Okay? So schedule is from the data. Remember, I show you at the beginning the data matrix that we saw. A particular column is schedule. That's one, two, three, four, whatever that is, the order. So schedule bracket i extract the schedule of observation i. Okay, so that's the index. It's one or two or three or four. And then we fit that in, in a nested structure here, for the vector of mu j. Mu j is a vector of length capital J. And that's just what the mu is. I mean, mu j specifically. So mu1 is the mean for group 1. Mu2 is the mean for group 2, et cetera, et cetera. Okay? So if I do mu j bracket schedule bracket i, that gives me the mu j that I mean in my model. Okay. And uh, the other part of this, as you can see, we write uh, in uh, sigma 2. That's because uh, the I think in, um, I write it here, number 3. D norms takes mean and precision. Okay, that's just how JAX works. So you have to fit in the precision instead of the standard deviation. Okay, in R is standard deviation, in JAX is precision, so you just need to like be careful. So I've been writing is as inverse gamma squared, oh sorry, inverse sigma squared, just to represent that that I mean is the precision. Okay. And we're gonna deal with that later, like how to how to get that inverse sigma squared. So that's the likelihood part. The middle part is about the priors. So there are two priors going on. One is the two-stage prior that we have for mu, and we wrote it in the loop. And the other one is the prior for sigma. Remember that sigma being shared across different schedules? So that is a, so let's look at the simpler one first. Remember we give it as a, um, uh, what is it? Inverse sigma squared to be a gamma distribution, right? So we use d gamma, and then this a g and b g. Later, you can fit in, like I mean, you can write one and one now, but to be more flexible, let's use some placeholder for now, and then give the values later. Okay, so let's use a g and b g. You can use whatever you like, and you notice that I uh, also added this because I mean. Uh, and mostly using the precision is trying to, I mean, make the JAX code work more smoothly. But I'm more in, uh, comparing to the precision, I'm more interested in sigma itself. Okay. So if you want to return this parameter from the JAX, like later we're gonna run like MCMC using JAX. But then later, if I want to, uh, like, what is it? Save the draws about sigma themselves, not inverse sigma square, sigmas themselves. Then I can actually add this line here. Because sigma is the square root of this, uh, what is it? The inverse of inverse sigma two. Okay, so that's what this P O W stands for. That's power, but it's negative one power, so it's inverse. So pretty much, I'm just using a known function using square root and the power to extract sigma themselves. So when I have this line in the model. Jax knows that I want to return sigma later. Okay. So that's the easier prior here. So this part, these two lines are about the priors for um, sigma or inverse sigma. So the loop right, right above it is the prior that we need for um, the mu j. So this is, I think, um, more straightforward than the previous loop, if you think. 
if you agree. Um, because now we're just looping through one to capital J, because that's how many mu j's we have. And then in each of that, we're going to have a mu j bracket j, that's the index. And then with tilde, we give a normal uh, prior, remember? And we let the mean to be mu, and then the, um, the standard deviation to be tau, so the precision is inverse tau square. So you have to also give precision to that. So that's what we have. Okay. So this is the part for mu. And lastly is the hyperprior at the end. So mm, let's see. So mu, remember uh, for the hyperprior, I think we're saying that we're going to get normal mu zero and gamma zero. I think that's what I used in the notation. Yeah, so this mu zero is mu zero. And this is just, again, we have to fit in uh, precision. So you can go do it as one over g zero square. I think I write g stands for uh, gamma. Mm -hmm. And then for tau, or inverse tau, that's the hyperprior, hyperparameter in the prior for mu j. Okay. So we give, remember, gamma 1, 1. But just to be flexible, I give a, t, and b, t for now. And we can fit in the values later. And you notice I do something similarly here. Because I want to return tau, not so much inverse tau squared. So I do the same trick with sigma. So I return this tau parameter from my Jack script. So later I can save those draws and then summarize those draws instead. I mean, if you don't want, you can also just save all of the inverse sigma square and inverse tau square, and then just do, I mean, the transformation later outside. You can do that, welcome to do that. It's just, Jack's actually is flexible enough that if you have lines like this and this, it will give you uh, the particular parameter that you want. And this is, again, I think very typical with normal model because really it's because they take a precision and then you might only be interested in the sigma. So most likely, I think, in this course at least, you're going to see it in this context more than the other ones. Okay? But um, Jax can do that for you. Okay. And I think I'm just going to end here. Let me see what I have. Yeah, maybe just really quick. This is the part that um, the remaining part, like we fit in the data, like why are the ratings? Schedule is the schedule column from the data. N is length of Y, so that's the number of observations. J, as you can see, uh, I'm using length unique schedule just to count how many schedules there are. We know it's four, but uh, you still need to return. I mean, you can type four, but better use it uh, in the syntax version. And uh, the init function here, again, this is trying to make sure that we uh, can set seed. And set seed it works differently in JAX. It's just, it's not that you write set seed and it's going to set seed. It's not like that. We have to do something extra. So this is just some simple code. You can use it later. Just copy and paste. And lastly, you can see I have a data, the underscore data, which is the list. Contains the rating, contains the schedule, capital N, capital J, and then all of the values that I give for the priors and the hyperpriors. Okay, so remember I give mu um, to be uh, normal 0.1 and 0.5. So I give those values here. And for the remaining two gamma priors, I give gamma 1, 1. So that's how I give all of the ones here. Okay, so you can change priors here if you want. And then this part, I think we talked about, we didn't get to, get to implement it, but now once you download uh, the JAX software, you can run this code. And um, this, again, specifies the model string itself, number of chains. So here I'm just doing it as one. Fit in the data. Monitor gives you, like, you specify which are the parameters that you want to monitor. So those will be the ones going to be computed and returned for you. The adaptation period, the burning period, the sample period, and the thinning. Uh, right now we're doing one. I think it's not really sticky at all. So one is okay. And then the last one is uh, getting the initial values in. Okay. 
All right, I'm gonna stop here already. Right, one minute late. So um, Tuesday when we come back, we're gonna continue. Uh, I mean, bring your laptop. I think that's probably better for for Tuesday, so we can do more demo. Thank you.